Welcome to Bike Social. I'm Adam Child. This is the stunning Azores. And more importantly, this is Husqvarna's new Norden 901. So the mandatory picture of all the bikes outside the hotel. But this is a little bit different because this is the launch of Husqvarna's new Norton 901. And we are in the Azores, which is a two day test on road and off road. It's going to be pretty extreme, pretty gnarly, apparently in true Husqvarna style. And this new Norton sits between the KTM 890 Adventure and the Adventure R. So it's not as extreme as the 890 Adventure R, so the suspension travel is a little less, the seat height is a little less, but it's one step above the standard 890. So it's kind of more off-road bias, but not extreme. I hope that makes sense. Styling is obviously very unique to this model. Um, I personally like the styling. Everything on this bike is standard, aside from the Acropovic Encan. There's tires that come with uh, the Pirellis, they're standard. The fog lights are standard, the hand guards, everything you see on the model is standard. I'll show you the dash. We've got multiple rider modes. The Explorer is an optional extra, and the Explorer mode allows you to play with the uh, throttle and slip adjuster and ABS and traction, where the other modes are a bit more limited. Um, but I'll run you through more of that later on. We've got two days of testing. On road and off road, this island, of, from what I've seen, is absolutely stunning. I think it's a good looking bike, personally. I think it's good looking. Um, it's slightly heavier than the 890, the fuel tank is slightly smaller, but we've got corner and ABS, we've got corner and traction control, and, it, and the quick shifter also. So let's go kit it up. Now the northern means trust the north or follow the north. So we've gone west, about two hours west of Lisbon because the Azores is in the middle of the Atlantic. And there's a good reason for that because this is like a playground for motorcycling. You can do what you want here. Even the locals applaud you when you ride off road quickly. We've encountered every weather imaginable. At times it's like Scotland, it's heavy rain, it's thick fog. Then you come down to sea level and it's 20 degrees, it's tropical, it's very humid. We've done sand, gravel, mud, fast, road, hairpins, everything you could possibly do. Husqvarna are clearly confident that they had the correct package because they've given us two days to put this bike through its paces, to test the multiple rider modes and the multiple rider aids. The bike comes with cornering traction control, cornering ABS, an IMU, which basically uh, translates to the brain of the bike what is happening, as in wheel speed, lean angle, etc. You've got three standard modes, which is off-road, street, and a rain mode. And then there's an optional explorer mode. In the optional explorer mode, you can trim the rider aids to conditions and the way you want to ride. So obviously when it was wet and it was horrible and it was greasy, it was into the rain mode. Um, but for me, I preferred uh, playing with the slip control and playing with the traction control in the Explorer mode. It's a bit of a shame that doesn't come as standard and you're going to have to pay a little bit extra for that. While we're talking about non-standard items, the fancy exhaust, that's an optional extra as well. So this is day two. We are literally on top of a volcano. Over there, is the Atlantic down that amazing drop off over there is the route that we're going to take 
across that massive ridge. So you can see it all the way up there. And in there is basically the crater of a volcano. Uh, woo! And that's the route we just took that's over there. So we're going right across that ridge. I didn't realise the drop off was so big. And uh, yeah, not a bad day. Essentially what Husqvarna have done in a very simplistic way has stolen all the best bits from KTM because they're owned by the same company. So they've already got the developed engine, they've already got the developed chassis. The suspension is from WP, you've guessed it, comes under the same umbrella. But what they've done is hit it in the middle between the KTM 890 Adventure and the 890R. Now the 890 Adventure has a 21 inch front wheel, it's capable of off-road but it's more road focused. The R version is a 21 inch front wheel again, but much more off-road focused. And the Norden kind of sits in that middle little gap. So for example, the seat height is taller than the standard 890 Adventure, but not as tall as the 890R. The travel on the suspension is 220, 215. Ground clearance is 220. So it's right in between the R and the standard 890. So what does that mean? Well, it essentially means you've got the best of both worlds because it's capable off-road and it's capable on-road. When you ride an adventure bike off-road that's specifically designed for off-road, it feels like you're trying to run on stilts because you're really tall and really high up. The seat's usually thin and narrow and uncomfortable. This isn't. We've got a nice wide plus seat. We've got comfortable ergonomics and it works off-road. And equally, when you ride a bike that is designed to look like an adventure bike but it's designed to work on the road, it doesn't work off-road. And I'm more than happy in the conditions that I've ridden this bike in. I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination, so I really rely on the rider aids. I've relied on the traction control. I've relied on the cornering ABS. Here in the Azores, it changes by the minute. You can be in perfect conditions, dry roads, getting great grip from these Pirelli off-road looking tires. And then the next corner, you're greeted by a herd of cows, loads of cow crap, and you go, Jesus, I really need some cornering ABS. And it's there as a backup. The base bike, as I said, is very similar to the KTM, which you're starting off with a proven recipe, so you're not going to go far wrong. What they've done is added their individual style, their looks, new TFT clocks, different ergonomics. The bodywork actually allows wind to come through the bodywork, which adds stability, and it's really, really stable, which is impressive for a bike with a 21-inch front wheel and long travel suspension. There's a huge range of accessories also available for this bike. You've got hard luggage, soft luggage, different seat. This is on its standard setting, but it will go up to a higher setting. If I was going to start nitpicking, struggling to find faults, one for me is the brakes are adequate, they're very good, but they feel a little bit wooden. I had the same comment when I rode the 890 Adventure and the 890R. They're not sharp, but arguably you don't want sharp brakes when you're riding off-road. They're like 8 out of 10 rather than 10 out of 10. And the dash, sometimes when you flick between the modes, in the centre is gear position and sometimes that flicks to the traction control position. So sometimes I thought traction was on forward, it wasn't, I was actually in fourth gear. But it's just little nitpicking, you're really struggling to find a fault. It's a true global enduro bike. Lots of manufacturers give us this. This is a true global bike, this can take on the world. But you soon start to find faults, it's either not comfortable enough or it's no good off-road. And this is the best of both worlds. It's very reminiscent, because I'm an old man, of the old KTM kind of 950, 990, which everybody loved and then disappeared and everybody was wondering why. But the true test of this bike is gonna be when we put it against the competition, because this is a, a minefest of bikes. You've got Africa Twins, you've got the KTMs, you've got this, you've got the new Aprilia, the list kind of goes on. There's a huge amount of bikes with 21 inch front wheels that claim they are off-road, all-purpose enduro bikes. But as far as riding it here in the Azores, <laughs> I'm almost blown away. We've done everything you could possibly imagine to this bike. Sand, ruts, off-road, on-road, high speed, low speed, in town, slippery, green cobbles, 
awfulness. And all the time, the rider is there to back us up from slippery, awful conditions to going up steep mountain passes. I've thoroughly enjoyed riding here in the Azores. I've thoroughly enjoyed riding this bike. It's gone above my expectations. It's not intimidating like I thought it would be. It's good off-road and it's good on-road. So just to prove every day isn't sunshine, cocktails and uh, hotels, we are in the Azores. Cool?